Hi, I'm Dave with One Adventure at a Time. We've been traveling full time in our self-converted van for 11 months. And if you're new to the channel, every Wednesday we cover van topics. And don't forget to check out our Sunday videos where we find amazing free camping just like this and hope to inspire you to get out and enjoy these beautiful destinations. Today we're going to check our power steering fluid. I'll show you where it's located and what tools you need. Let's get started. <laughs> The power steering's been acting a little odd lately. It's been rough when cornering and starting to make a noise that I didn't hear before. So what I want to do is I want to check the power steering fluid reservoir and see if it's low. And you're going to only need one tool to do this job. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket and wrench. And you'll also need power steering fluid. Make sure you get the power steering fluid that's recommended for Chrysler vehicles. Okay, so the reservoir is right here, and it's actually hard to get to because you got to remove this cap. And this cap will not come off because of the fill tube for the window wash is in the way. But that's easy to take off. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. We'll take this bolt out. We'll push on this tab and we'll pull it out. That will loosen it up. We'll be able to move it off to the side and get this cap off. I'm gonna pull on this tab right here and just pull this out. There it is. So going back in, it will just snap right back in. All right, we're just gonna move it up out of the way here because all we want is access to get this plastic cap off. Take the cap off and there's the power steering reservoir. So let's check it. First, I can take a look around, see if I see any leaks. It's dirty, but I don't actually see any leaks. So let's see what we have. You want to make sure the engine's off, of course, when you do this. And let's take a look. Well, as you can see, the stick is pretty dry, except for the very, very end of it. So it is definitely low on fluid. So we don't want to go over max, but it looks like we need to bring the level up about a half inch or so. So we'll add some more fluid. This dipstick is made to read whether the motor's hot or cold. So it's got a reading on one side for when the motor's heated up and another reading on the other side when it's cooled down. So if your motor's been sitting for a while, make sure you're using the cool and not the hot max minimum level. Just a little bit more. And what happens if we go over? We do not want to go over. We could cause damage. Looks pretty good. The cap's on, it's nice and tight. Now we're going to stick that black cover back on. It's got the word push, so we're going to make sure we push on it as we stick it on. And it made a nice little snap noise, so we know it's secure. And all we have to do is put the fill tube back on, right back in that slot. That tab went over, so it's locked in, and stick our bolt back in. All right, that's it, it's all back together. Time to get on the road and test it out. I've only been driving a mile and I can already tell it's better. Way smoother around the corners, not making any more funny noises. So I think we've got the problem fixed. I will check it in about two weeks to make sure the level has not gone down, make sure I don't have any leaks. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up consider subscribing.
and thank you for watching. Dave, Dave, what is that? Oh no, that's our insulation. It looks like there's got to be a rat nest in there or a mouse. Well, that's not good. That's not good. We need to get all that out of there, including the mouse. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh no. Thank <laughs> you.